Well, hello and welcome auto enthusiast. This is two channel listening, quite possibly your 17th favorite audio gear review channel. I'm your host, Jason, and I pride myself on swimming upstream to bring you terrific used budget gear, occasionally some hidden gems, other times a little bit of vintage history. Most of the times, just really trying to find some of those products that's, that are outside or off the mainstream audio hobby radar. This week is no exception, as I will be discussing with you a company that I've never heard of three weeks ago, let alone the brand. That is OSD Audio, Optimal Speaker Design Audio, out of Brea, California. Now this tiny little company was founded in 2003 by a handful of audio enthusiasts, one of which happens to be from MK, Miller Kreisel. They have only 15 employees with about an annual revenue budget of $2 million. They specialize in home theater, in-ceiling speakers, automation, and outdoor speakers. This little integrated amplifier we'll be discussing today just happens to be a one-off product for them. Seems to be a, a shift in wanting to also do a little bit more of the true two-channel audiophile uh, audio gear. So with that, what do we have, folks? We have the OSD, try not to drop it, OSD Audio Nero Stream XD. Now, this is a hot little product. So, you know, I don't know if that's what they meant by wanting to name it Nero. Uh, it hasn't burned down the apartment, which is a good thing. And, you know, I'll have to ask them about that naming convention because that's quite, quite interesting. It is a Class D amplifier. It operates at 30 watts into 8 ohms or doubles into 60 watts at 4 ohms and is considered a 4 ohm stable product. Size wise, it is seven and a half inches across, it is two inches deep, and it is six inches, I'm sorry, two inches tall, six inches deep at the binding post or the little antennae here. What you have is a typical, it is not a wall wart, it's actually a true uh, 115 volt or 110 volt operation. You have your binding post, it has 4.2 app decks, you have a actual subwoofer out, a auxiliary line, a USB dongle for those that like to have uh, an extended library connected directly to their DAC, or even a digital input. It is Bluetooth, wireless uh, connection, and it actually has its own app uh, that you can download for your, for your cell phone. I believe, I'm guessing that it is a licensed app and it looks identical to the Muso app that you have to download to operate the Deco here, 125 Sky Peachtree. The user interface, the, the GUI, all of it is completely identical. The only difference being that the thumbnail is a, it's OSD derived or again with that is the Muso app. This is a feature packed little guy. And I tell you what, it's interesting. There's a little bit of inconsistencies from what the website information says and the little pamphlet that it comes with. So while I give you guys a peek under the hood, this is an incredibly densely packed package. All the circuit boards, the switching power supply, when I picked it up and the, the pamphlet said, said it was 2.8 uh, pounds, I was just curious if that was really true. And I happened to have a, a pretty good parcel uh, digital scale and I threw it on my parcel scale. And the parcel scale that says this thing is actually 3.6 pounds. I attributed that extra beef to the fact that this 30 watts at 8 ohms is a very strong 30 watts, and I was incredibly impressed by the performance of this guy. It has a Cirrus Logic chip in it. 
Uh, the signal to noise ratio is a very respectable 95 dB, which at the price point, which I haven't said yet, if I won't say it about a hundred times, I bought this off of Amazon for $244 delivered. Now it does have a remote and it's a little slim remote. And if any of you watched my little unboxing video, I had, a, I had some fun doing that. That's with all the little, with all the little led lights that I have, um, this remote will control all my LED lights. Unfortunately, when it's up next to it, some will turn on, some will turn off, and some will change colors. So obviously the chipset that uh, this is being built with shares that same, uh, that same Hertz level. Outside of the remote itself, it does also have a neat little function that with the volume knob, you can actually click it, you push it in, and it will shift from each of the inputs with one push, it'll go to the next one in line from left to right until it goes back into standby mode. So that was, that was also a nice little feature that's, that's built into this design. Something else that really surprised me at, the, at this price point, and not only surprised me, I've never had an integrated amplifier that actually did this. It can take the signal off of my DAC, the low voltage signal that comes off of my Marantz ND8006. This little guy has an auto standby mode, so if nothing's playing, if you're not streaming anything through the app, or there's nothing into the input signal, it will turn itself off and stay in standby mode. But when I would come home from work, get in my listening position, fire up the laptop, hit play on Amazon, there's enough voltage current coming off of the Marantz that this would turn itself on and just start playing. So you didn't even have to use the remote to turn off. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but to me that's just a neat feature built into something that is literally one quarter the price of the Peachtree Deco 125 Sky. Call it what you will, sometimes I'm amazed at just how much technology that can be squeezed into these little boxes at this price point. How that little Brea company OSD makes even $10 on this, I have no idea because it does a lot for that $245 price tag. In operation with its OSD app, when I started it up, it uh, basically you have to go through the menus and it's again, it's 100% identical startup to the Muso app. You have to go to your server. You have to you have to click to click the server first. Put in the password, and then it'll do the hand. It'll do a Wi-Fi handoff, and then you could start using the o, the OSD app to find your music. It has uh, basically it has a lot of the same menus or the same channels: the Spotify, Tidal, uh, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, or Napster. At as of this point, it still does not have Amazon HD which really is kind of annoying to me, but, but, or however, another thing that at $250 that the OSD Nero does that not even my $1,000 Peachtree does, it will play files off of servers or off of your laptops. I was incredibly pleased that the app found my music on my laptop. I was able to go through the artists, go through the songs, and hit play and stream my HD tracks directly from my laptop to the Nero. So, you know, kudos to them that a $250 product truly is an all-in-one integrated system for the house. Bravo on that at that price point. Now, using the app and playing just Spotify as this may be used regularly at its price point, fired up some Dave Matthews and, you know, Spotify is what it is. The quality that you get is on par with anything else. Definitely on par, same playback quality that you would get with the, the Peachtree Deco 125. So competing, I could hear no difference. There was no um, benefit one to the other using the apps. Both were, both were on equal footing as far as that playback goes. The one huge crinkle that did come up 
which surprised me in my small apartment is that when using the app and Spotify or any of the music playback through the app, even controlling the, uh, the music I had on my laptop, when I got to the back of the apartment in the back bedroom, <clears throat> which isn't more than 30 to 35 feet, I did get some signal drop out and when playing some Sydney Lopper, it was getting choppy and as I had to come back into the kitchen, the signal strength would get stronger. So there is a bit of a, a weakness there if you're going to be using your, your phone and using that app it doesn't like getting it doesn't like you getting more than i would say 35 feet away from the system and uh, the server itself the wi-fi server is in is in another room as well but again with where that wi-fi server at no point is there a true 30 feet that i would be away from that so that was one you know kind of weak spot that i had found in the its playback um you know operating protocol with that switching it up and doing the the auxiliary inputs <clears throat> so i went direct with my marantz nd and fired and co connected it to the performance lines that i have here from eric s concepts so back to that 95 db signal to noise ratio and thinking of some other serious budget products that i've had in the past particularly tube products there will need to be some speaker matching again for this unit. So with its 30 watt class D amp connected to the zoos that are 97 dB, I did get a little bit of noise coming through the speakers, a little bit of a, a, a signal pulsing, if you will. When the apartment was completely silent for all of five seconds at a time in my listening position, I would get the faintest bit of that pulsing and <clears throat> as soon as you turn on any song at at any playback level you would you would not hear that but in a completely silent room there was a little bit of a pulsing from the zoo audio that are 97 db efficient moving up to the performance line speakers that are 8 ohm 90 db efficient that noise would drop to within three feet of the speakers coming from the the doped tweeter again stepping up to the sierra acoustic two ex's that are 86 db i had to i had to have my ear directly within one feet of the ribbon tweeter and it was less of a pulse than just your typical um, stereo hiss coming through the raw tweeter so you know just i just want to put that out there that anybody who's interested in wanting to jump on a 250 dollars all-in integrated you need to have a little bit of of speaker synergy with the um the efficiency of that speaker i would say anything that's 90 to 87 db is probably the sweet spot uh for a 30 a 30 watt class d product now How does it sound? Again, when I fired up the Spotify just on the app side alone to do Bluetooth streaming, first album I brought up was, uh, was, sorry, first album I brought up was Dave Matthews, some busted stuff, and I was very happy with what I was hearing right out of the get-go. I actually called up my buddy Dave from Authentic Audio Idaho and said, Dave, you got to hear what this little $250 integrated can do on $4,500 speakers. So Dave came over and went through our usual songs, Melody Gardo, a little bit of Patricia Barber, played Nardis at obscene levels for what 30 watts can do for a, a 90 dB speaker and was actually able to play back at up to 90 dB where things would finally start to get that typical class D, that kind of that smearing in the top end. Symbols would get, you know, would start to kind of congeal together and you'd lose the focus and you would lose some of the sound staging as you push these speakers to 90 dB. But generally, nobody should be listening to nine, at 90 dB for any extended period of time. Bring it back down to 85 dB and below and 
everything was very tidy, uh, very surprised, and very pleased on a $250 integrated how it could drive $4,500 speakers. Hooking it up to the Sierra 2EX, comfortably played those at 87 dB and actual, actually no smearing with the RAL tweeter at 87 dB. Uh, put on some classical music just to get that instrument separation and really crank it up and it just, it just did an excellent job. The sound stage was what you would expect for a product at this price point. It was within the speakers and did not, you know, nothing was exaggerated outside of the speakers. It did not, you know, did not perform any, any particular tricks. But for 30 watts, they are an incredibly strong 30 watts. Now, obviously, the Zoo Audio Dirty Weekends, a 97 dB speaker should be a no-brainer with 30, 30 watts of Class D power. Not my favorite mix, actually, which really surprised me. I thought, okay, this would stress the amp out the least amount. There are more so 12, 12 ohm operation speakers, and it just kind of exaggerated the bass a bit, and that's where I have to say that at one quarter the price of the peach tree with the headroom that the peach tree has with its 120 watts of class d power that's where you could really start to see in a head-to-head -head combination okay with the osd nero the sound stage plays within the walls of the speakers so if you're seven feet out your sound stage is going to be about seven feet spread spread out in front of you and the mids and the uppers are are in a nice tight center grouping good good instrument separation nothing exceptional just really good for what it is at its price point and with these speakers th that i have on hand I was very pleased with the, um, the details that I was getting, good depth, very good mid-range, and, and notably a, a very respectable top end. Going back to the Peachtree Deco 125, this is where the headroom became very obvious. The Nero, what it would do was that it seemed to be tweaked or tipped towards the bottom end and the bottom end was the one part where I would say was the detractor in the sound quality. When I fire, fire up the, the Deca 125, the bass is in line with the rest of the mid-range and the treble. It plays wider, it plays deeper, it plays bigger, and that's where the headroom really comes in with the extra, the extra watts. When you plug in the OSD, the bass seems to stay outside of the boxes and stays at that large format volume, but the mid-range and the, and the treble shrink in and you have this nice forward presentation that's, that's like six feet hanging out in front of you, but the bass tends to be overemphasized and become too, too much a part of the playback when you're really being critical and I'm and I have everything cranked to about you know 82 dB playback with each of the three speakers that I have on hand. Now, mind you, I'm being extremely critical of what this 250 watt amplifier can do. It's important to be incredibly critical because I'm not going to fly off the handle and say, oh, this is you know this is the best thing you can get out there. To a price point, it is. It absolutely is. It goes without saying, folks, it goes without saying that I had a real opportunity to share something special with you all. As you know, I have the Denon DVD 3930 SACD player slash DVD player. It is one of those products that when it was built in 2006 to 2000, 2008 it too is a major overachiever in its price class i bought it on the used market for 320 dollars you partner it with that and you are playing dsd sacd quality music 
for under $600 and you can pick whatever speaker you want. The speaker that I tended to appreciate the most with the OSD ended up being the actual Sierra 2EXs, my least efficient speaker. In my room with my intimate setting, it was the most appropriate mix of clarity, detail, sound staging, and just impressive playback, especially plugging in my SACD player. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I've got $600 worth of front end plugged into, into $1,600 speakers. Not only is this not the 50-50 ratio, but I have to say this is this is better. This is better. When you find a combination like this and you can plug in external units, forget it that it's a $300 SACD player. Say it's your favorite $400 record player. Now you still would have to get a phono preamp, of course, some, you know, some little budget phono preamp. Maybe you build an entire front end system for a thousand dollars and then you save all of that money for your favorite speaker of choice. Now the, the Zoo wasn't my favorite pairing just because of its high efficiency and the fact that this needed to have a little bit more control over the bass and the Zoo is definitely my most bass heavy speaker in this apartment despite having floor coverings, wall coverings, everything else that I've done to try to control the sound in here. The lower efficiency speaker, stand mount speakers that I have actually were a really good match for the, the Nero integrated amplifier. Again, my space is seven, seven feet center to center with my listening position eight feet away. So that may not work if you have a room that where your listening position is going to be 12 feet away and your speakers are wider, you would obviously need a little bit more power, but a 90 to 92 dB speaker would work optimally in that situation too, or should work optimally in that situation given what the power requirements would be in that type of a setting with that type of efficiency. I sold last week my statement preamplifier to make a point. That was an $8,000 preamplifier, my Class A CD, CP700. It was a preamplifier that I had waited three years to get. And I just got to a point with how expensive that was and the performance, the different types of uh, monoblock stereo equipment that I would add to it. I wanna prove a point to you guys that you can play at a certain level and then come down because the quality of products that are coming out these days are that good that it's blurring the lines of what you need to spend to be completely happy with your front end system. I plan to spend the next several months going out of my way to find integrated amplifiers that are at a certain price point to where you can save your money and put the majority of your money into the speakers. You know, all those startup channels, all of those, all of those YouTube videos that are dedicated to saying, what should you do first? Save the majority of your money and put those into quality speakers and the rest of the money would go into amplifiers, preamplifiers, DACs, et cetera, et cetera. With the last piece, if you have anything left over being your speaker cables and your interconnect cables. I subscribe to that and I am proving that out by the fact that I successfully used a $600 front end to happily play back through $4,500 speakers or $1,800 speakers or $1,000 tower speakers. I just want to overemphasize that point for you all. It is, is to me and what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to bring you on a budget to show that there's different ways to save and there's different ways to win in this hobby. You do not have to have $5,000 front end systems to get the best sound quality from your speakers. With the right pairings, with the right efficiencies 
And obviously the biggest one, you have to be open to experimentation. You have to accept that there's just some items that are not gonna sound as good with others. And as I've pointed out, I've had a couple of those come through my hands where I actually didn't even finish the review or I refused to review, review the product because I didn't think I could do it justice. It did not sound right with the products that I had, I had on hand and there was not that appropriate, appropriate synergy. So, I forgot one very important point about how this altered my own views towards the hi-fi, towards sound quality, and most of all, towards return on investment for budget gear. When Dave and I were listening and, and having a, a spirited conversation about this product in you know, why do we spend so much on certain pieces of gear expecting the sound quality to be that much more elevated and then something like this comes across our, our lap and we go, oh my gosh, why would I have, you know, something at so many thousands of dollars when this is 85, 90% of the way there? Nevertheless, that conversation went on to the fact that for the first time in the 21 episodes that I've released to you, I finally find it absolutely necessary that I come up with my own two-channel listening award to give to a product. And the OSD Nero Stream XD is such a product that at $250, I have to award this the Overachiever Award for Outstanding Value. And this is the first time that I've ever come up with my own award to give to a product. And I am bestowing the Overachiever Award to the OSD Nero Stream XD. It is that good for $250. And the fact that it is going to be staying in my stable when I get to the new house, this is going to go into the bedroom and it is going to become a part of my bedroom system. It is just that good and I, I want to keep it. I also want to keep it for the long haul to prove out its reliability and its durability. There are many topping products, SMLS, SMLSL, whatever the, that brand is. There are a lot of other budget products that are in that 150 to to $400 price point, and there's an expectation of its reliability and its durability. So it's just another good reason to keep the OSD on hand with my stable to come back to you if at any given point over the next six months to a year, if I have an issue with it, I will let you guys know as far as, a, as, far as reliability goes. But I definitely in these last week and a half put it through some serious torture testing using the, you know, my, my stand mounts to push 90 dB uh, of playback into the stand mount monitor. And it got just slightly warm, but never shut off. It didn't go into clipping. It just was the typical class D sound that it's like, okay, yeah, I got to back it off. That's, that's obviously smearing now. So we covered off on its inputs, its operation, the OSD app, where it comes from, you can buy it on Amazon. The three different speakers that I have on hand, it plays the mid range really well. The top range is just right until you get to ridiculous playback levels. Anything that really is above 80, 85 dB is, is definitely outside of its comfort zone. It can do it, but then you start to hear a little bit of that smearing. When you keep it under 85 dB, it's absolutely on par with the peach tree. And the fact that it can play my HD tracks from my laptop is a huge win for the OSD over the peach tree. And I like that the fact that it has that auto on, auto off feature that the signal strength through the inputs is enough to turn it on or it'll recognize that it's not getting any signal and turn itself off. Again, another point for the OSD. Sound quality wise, the Peachtree has more headroom, the sound stage is bigger, and it definitely has way more grip and it settles the bass down where it should be in relative size to what the soundstage is. 
in terms of actual soundstage depth, the treble, the treble quality, again, to a certain dB of playback, it's on par with the Peachtree. The Peachtree Deco 125 Sky. With that, the Nova 150 is in house. I will start breaking that in this next week with the, the performance line number one speakers from Eric S. Concept from Warsaw, Poland. Yes, Poland. I spent some money to import these and have them custom painted to one of my favorite all-time colors of British racing green. So I will be super excited to share that with you guys. Until then, I am your budget audiophile host. I hope you enjoy all these kooky one-off products or looking for those items that kind of stay under the mainstream radar. I appreciate all of the feedback that I get from you guys as well as lots of good suggestions. Just know that I write them down. I've been putting them into a file and as things come up on Hi-Fi Shark, if I can, if it's within the budget, I will probably buy it and review it for you. So have a great week. Be kind to one another.